Hey there guys, you're watching the Be A Hero Gaming channel where we talk about action and adventure games and how you can be a hero in your real lives as well as in your games. Uh, today we're going to do a little video on uh, sun dropping your models here. I have a couple of things out here I want to show to you, some things that I've done. And uh, actually one of these models is the real sun drop and you can probably tell which one. It does stand out a little bit and I want to talk about that here in just a second. But first of all... Um, Something that you can do to be a hero in your real lives is provide excellent service in whatever your job is. Even if you're looking to move up to a different job or change jobs, wherever you're at, just do a good job all the way to the end. Provide great service whether you work with people or don't work with people. There's always something that you can do to provide great service. And it's going to help you be more valuable as an employee. It's going to help your customers appreciate you more and your management appreciate you more. And it's just going to do wonders for your career. So provide great service and people will really appreciate it and will keep coming back to you. And the reason why I bring that up is because um, Awakened Realms provided great service for me, which I was really impressed with. When I backed the Tainted Grail Kickstarter, uh, inside my box, I had the bonus character. I think her name is Niam or Niam. I'm not sure you can say that, but Niam. Uh, I had her cards and her player board, but there was a slot with a missing miniature in the box. And so I had emailed Awakened Realms and said, hey, um, you forgot to put the Neon Miniature in my box. And they emailed back and said, well, what's your, your backer number and order number and all that stuff? I sent that to them. And they said, well, it turns out you did not order the Neon Miniature. That was an add-on. You did not add that on. And so I messaged back and said, well, that's funny because I have the cards as well as the player board in my box, uh, but just not the miniature. And so I just figured I was lucky and got something I wasn't supposed to get, which it, which was the fact, actually, it was, that, that's the way it turned out, and thought that was the end of it. And anyway, they had messaged me back and said, hey, I tell you what, if you will pay the shipping, we will send you the Neon Miniature, which I thought was really cool because that was only like $6, and I think the Neon add-on was 11 at the time they did the, the Kickstarter. So very cool that, um, again, they accidentally put that stuff in there. And then even on top of that, they, they sent me the miniature just for shipping. So this here is the Neon miniature. And not only did they send me the Neon miniature, but they sent me the sun-dropped version. So uh, I don't know. They asked me for pictures of my game, and I had told them I had painted these. So I didn't have the sun drop. I said I had painted these, and that's when I noticed the missing miniature. But uh, they sent me the only one they had. They sent me the sun-dropped one anyway. And I was really curious to see how this was going to compare to ones that I had actually sun dropped because I only did it from pictures I'd seen online. And so you can see here that it came pretty close, except that mine is maybe a little bit warmer, a little bit more orange. Um, and you can't quite tell as much in this uh, miniature here as you can with this one. This one here, uh, he, his apron looks a lot more orange here. And then here's the backs of them here. So I thought it was really cool that it turned out very, very close uh, to what I had guessed that these were supposed to look like. And so just in a quick review, I did do a video on this, but it's just a quick review so I can point out the differences of some of these other ones here. Um, these miniatures here that I had sun dropped, these two and the Meneer back there, uh, I used a 50-50 mixture of dark wood and sand golem contrast paint. And uh, this, I felt like, was a little bit too dark. This, don't be deceived, is very orange. When you paint it on, it's it's pretty, uh, it's a lot more orange than it looks here. And so I wonder if that's why these ones kind of turned out a little more orange than uh, the actual sun drop miniature over here. <clears throat> um, but I used these two, a 50-50 mix of these over white primer, and then after I did that, I dry brushed a desert yellow as just a highlight. And so again, that could be another reason. This color is, is also a little warm and orangey, and it could have been the reason why these turned out the way they did. Maybe if I would have used something a little bit lighter or gone back with a lighter color, um, they would look uh, more in line with this one here. But just, uh, again, 50-50 mix of the dark wood and sand golem, um, white primer, followed by the desert yellow. Now, when uh, we started playing the game, I noticed that these little dials here were way too detailed and cool looking to leave as gray plastic. So I ended up painting these two and I wanted it to be something a little bit different than the Meneer, uh, just so that it would stand out a little bit more. I didn't want it to kind of you know blend in and you couldn't really tell there was a dial there. So I wanted to do it a different color, something a little bit lighter to make it stand out. And so uh, you might have noticed this kind of looks like bone. Well, after white primer, 
I use the Palette Bone Contrast Paint on it, um, which is just kind of a really, really light, light tan. It's actually more brown than this shows here. It's a little bit warmer than that. Um, and then afterwards, I just dry brushed some mummy robes, and that was it. So white primer plus the Palette Bone, and then a little mummy robes dry brush uh, was able to give me this effect here. And I just thought, it, again, it looked kind of cool here when you place the... When you place the dial in there, it made it look like you could tell that there was something different inside the miniature and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't just all going to be the same color. Now, uh, I had bought these separately and the intended purpose didn't really pan out. I didn't realize how big these were. I wanted something smaller to put on the, the cards when there was a Guardian because the, the Guardian cards took up a lot of room. Well, these things are pretty big and they actually take up a lot of room too, but... Here they are, and I wanted them to look a little bit different than the characters in case, you know, the characters were off fighting the Guardians. There was a little bit of contrast between the characters uh, and the Guardians. And so these I do have painted in the steps here, so you can kind of take a look at that here. Again, after a white primer here on the model, I used the Gravelord Gray contrast paint, and here's what that looks like after that's on there. And then... Uh, Ironically enough, I used the same highlight dry brush as I did with the dial, uh, which is going to be mummy robes. And so I used the mummy robes also to highlight. I had tried to use a gray color and it just blended in too much and you couldn't really tell there was a highlight. So I needed to use something a little bit lighter so that you could tell. So again, here you see the Gravelord Gray over white primer. And then here is the dry brush of the mummy robes just to give it a little bit uh, more of a contrast a little bit lighter hue on some of the details here on the models these were very tricky to paint just because there's so many details and stuff on them that uh, it took a while to to punch the paint down in all the little cracks and crevices here uh, but then again the, the dry brush went really quick I, I looked at these models and, and thought about painting them but man they're so detailed there's so many parts of these, I thought, man, that's going to take forever. And because of the fact that you rarely see these, unless there's a guardian encounter and they're wandering around the board, unless they wander off the board or or you, you eliminate the guardian, I just wanted it to, to have a little bit of detail on it here. Um, so it kind of looked a little bit better on the tabletop. So again, just the Grave Roller Gray over the white primer, Mummy Robes dry brush, um, a couple of different ways there. And I hope that's helpful. It gives you kind of an idea and some things you can do uh, with miniatures that are maybe just on the table for just a second and just have a small uh, moment of table presence and then they're gone. You don't really need to go crazy with them and they still look cooler than just having a piece of gray plastic on your table. Remember, guys, to be heroes out there. And I hope that, um, you know, whatever vocation you work in, you do a good job and you provide great service and it's going to do wonders uh, for your career and for the people that you work with. Make sure you guys are playing games, having fun, and uh, be a hero. Thanks for watching.